What's up guys, welcome to a continuation of the class inheritance video series that's a part of the AP Computer Science video series and in today's video we're going to be talking about abstract methods and classes. So you may be asking what an abstract class is and it's basically used to define a class that will be used to build new classes and you're probably like what the hell does that mean? But uh, we're going to delve a little further into that. And one thing to really note and uh, if I could highlight this with a highlighter I would highlight it. Um, the, the fundamental part of these abstract classes is that no objects or methods will be ever instantiated from an abstract class. So you can never create an instance of an abstract class or create an object of that abstract class. And, uh, and the reason you can't do that is because you want to be able to create objects um, from, you want to create instances of other classes that can um, inherit those, those methods and objects, or those methods and uh, variables that are defined in an abstract class. And so a subclass that extends an abstract superclass must implement all the methods defined in that abstract class. Uh, so you can create objects and then access the, um, those parts of the abstract class from those subclasses. And abstract classes are typically used when uh, you know a, a lot about that object but, and, and you know what you want to do with that object, but there are still a few unknowns. And we're going to take a look at that. And I provided sort of like a real-world example um, that can be used to sort of define abstract classes um, and sort of put things into perspective for you. So we, we, have, um, we have an abstract class that we called monster, and that is made up of vampire, ghost, and witch. So in this case, the monster is the abstract class, uh, which is sort of like a generality. And then these vampire, ghost, and witch classes are the, con are the concrete classes or the sort of the specific classes. And these, these, these three classes will inherit... Um, all of the methods and the functionality of this abstract class, but we won't, but we won't ever actually access or instantiate this monster class. And abstract versus con concrete, uh, and we're going to take a look at that right now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at abstract and concrete classes and how they can be used together within a program. And for the sake of me being lazy, I'm actually going to do everything all in one class file. Um, so typically what you would do is when you're working with different classes, you would create uh, more than one class files and then define your classes in those different class files. But because I'm lazy, we're just going to do it all in this one learned class file. Uh, but then we have to refrain from using the public key within our classes. So what we're going to start by doing is we're going to create an abstract class. Uh, again, we're going to not use public and we're just going to call it monster. And what we're going to do is we're going to create an instance variable or a class variable and we're going to call it name and then we're going to create a constructor. Um, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to mimic the uh, sort of the real world example that I gave just uh, to make things easier on you guys. So we're going to create this constructor and we're going to um, uh, make this an initialization constructor and pass the parameter of a string nom and then set name equal to nom. And if you don't know what I'm doing there and if you don't know why I'm doing that and why I'm using a constructor, uh, you can check out one of my earlier videos. It is called Constructors and Class Writing Practice and that should give you sort of a better understanding of what's happening. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a, um, an abstract method, so public abstract. We're going to make it a data type string and we're going to call it talk. And we're going to create that method body. And the reason why it's giving us an error here is because um, it says abstract, abstract methods do not specify a body. And the reason why this happens is because we don't want to define the functionality of this abstract method within our abstract class. What we want to do is define that functionality outside in a different class that we can inherit. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, we're, we are going to d declare this method, but we're just going to um, uh, use the Java format and put a semicolon after this method. And then when, once we once we again once we inherit like we talked about in the last video once we inherit this monster class we can be we can uh, we will be able to define the functionality of this talk method, and then we'll really quickly just end this class by creating a two string method, um, which will easily just return um, our instance variable plus maybe I don't know uh, says. Um, and then we can uh, import our talk method. And so that's, so, that's, so that's kind of an example of our abstract class. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create our concrete class. And like we said, um, in this example, we use monster as our abstract class. So we use monster as sort of our generality. But now it's time to create sort of the, the specific concrete classes. Um, so, for example, we can create the class uh, vampire. And we're going to have that uh, inheriting the monster class. And so now um, all the functionality of the monster class can be used within the the 
in the vampire class. And the reason why it's giving us an error here is because we have to define all the methods that um, all the abstract methods that we we declare. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to really quickly create a constructor of this vampire uh, instance, and we are going to again give it another parameter of string, and we can call that uh, name, and we can just say super name. And what the and so what super will do is it'll access the parent class. So in this case, it'll access the monster class. So it will it will in turn when we create an instance of this vampire class this super uh, name will will create uh, will will set the value of this name that we created up here to whatever we pass through uh, when we create this vampire object and now what we're gonna do is uh, to get rid of this error message that's kind of bugging us a little bit is we're gonna create our actual public string talk method and it's not an abstract method uh, it's a public string talk method and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna return something like I don't know um, I want to drink your blood because it is he's a vampire and he drinks blood. Um, and we're gonna put a semicolon to close that out and that should get rid of the error message that is on our vampire class. And just for example's sake we can create a um, another method um, and we can call it I'm just gonna copy and paste the f because this will have the same functionality and we can just call it uh, class ghost and that can extend the monster class and then obviously we have to change this um, and maybe instead of I want to drink your blood because he's a ghost and he's he's our, he's our concrete example concrete class example we can say uh, something like ooh um, I'm a ghost okay and now, obviously, what we have to do is we have to um, create instances of, of these classes. So if we say monster m is equal to new monster, uh, it will give us an error message because, again, we cannot instantiate um, our abstract class. So we're going to have to instantiate or create objects of our, um, our subclasses. So we can say vampire vamp is equal to new vampire. And it was giving us an error message because our, our constructor expects a string parameter and so we can uh, just set the name Dracula and that's uh, again this uh, we pass we pass the string Dracula and the super dot name or just the super name will assign the value Dracula to this uh, private string name that we created and then we can create another instance of the ghost class and we can just call it ghost ghost is equal to new ghost again and we have to specify and we can just call this one Casper and then what we can do is we can uh, create a print statement uh, that will print out these so we can print out vamp and we can print out ghost and if we go ahead and run this um, you can see that it says Dracula says I want to drink your blood and Casper says ooh I'm a ghost and obviously the spacing is messed up but that kinda gives you a uh, general example of how abstract classes work again um, we use this abstract class and we define this this uh, public acts abstract string talk method but we didn't give it functionality but instead we gave it functionality in our subclasses and yeah so I hope that gave you kind of um, a understanding on the difference between abstract and concrete classes and I hope that you can go ahead and use these um, on your free responses and when you're creating a program so thank you